Hello, hello, and welcome, my Leo Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs. Welcome to your seven card draw. What do I need? Shadow read for this full moon in Capricorn to new moon in Cancer, June into July 2021. I'm your reader, Mark Angela Lyons Mal for short, professional witch, professional intuitive, president of Drawing the Circle Productions since 1998. The Archangel of Lions, Mark Angelo Lions, Leo Rising. <laughs> you can call me Mal. Hey, <laughs> hi, 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 my lovely Leonines, my Lyrians, my Lyrans, however you want to pronounce that. Uh, very happy to be back to uh, work. Uh, my uh, my my dear friend who house sat and cat sat for me while I was away visiting family in Saratoga. I dropped him off in Brooklyn yesterday. So uh, house to myself. I'm a Virgo, Leo Rising, Mars conjunct Leo Rising, so very, very happy to, you know, kind of run around naked in my house, not on camera, I'm not that kind of girl, uh, even though it's Pride Month and I could, and no, I will not have an OnlyFans account, thank you very much, it's not going to happen, my parents are still alive, so no, 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 um, so instead I'm going to give you uh, a lovely, uh, lovely what do I need read, now it's a seven card draw, meaning one card from seven different decks. Uh, this time we're doing two tarot decks, two healing systems, and three oracles. I did the math. It's seven. I had it checked. <laughs> I keep my CPA busy uh, uh, to get you the clues, tips, and hints that you need about a specific timeline. This is not a timeless read, um, but we are looking at the uh, full moon, which is today, Thursday, uh, the 24th of June at the time of this recording. Uh, and it's a waning moon read to the uh, new moon. Uh, on Friday, July 9th in Cancer. So from Capricorn to Cancer, waning moon, letting go, releasing, forgiving, alchemizing, transforming, all the fun stuff. Uh, and that's why I find the waxing moon reads way more fun. Uh, but nonetheless, these are important because if you can get some coordinates on what it is that's in your energy field or what's going on around you, um, you know, it's just easier to go with the flow of letting go which also sort of rhymes. Uh, and we are adding a new deck that I just got up at, uh, at the Magic Moon in Saratoga Springs when I visited the Blessed Bee. Uh, it says here on the top, Mystical Celtic Blessing Cards uh, to Enrich and Empower by Lucy Cavendish. And I use her magical spell cards uh, for the Waxing Moon read. So I, and I start those, <laughs> the readings with those, right? Element of Fire. Uh, so uh, it, it's just kind of fun. Kind of really, really, really digging uh, these reads. So it's a general read. Take what resonates, leave what doesn't. I don't have to explain how uh, tarot works to you on uh, YouTube because if you're following me, chances are you're not in for the basics. I do like to go a little bit deeper than uh, most, uh, being that I've been reading cards since I'm 12 years old and I'm 52 at the time of this recording. Yeah, I know, I don't look in. Thank you. Rapid wrinkle repair. <laughs> Blessed be Andy McDowell. Uh, so let's get up in this gig. Uh, take what resonates, leave what doesn't. Uh, all the decks that I read are always in the bottom of the description box along with other interesting uh, links to educate and enter Entertain as you see fit. Got some stuff on Vimeo if you want to take some of my classes on my book, uh, Words of Grace from a Professional, which now on Kindle, uh, you can find that down below. $9.99 US dollars, cheaper than a pack of cigarettes and way more bang for your buck. Uh, yeah, so uh, other than that, both feet on the floor, if you can, focus on your breath, if you will. I will do the same to get you the clarity, guidance, and grace that I can from my pantheons of the divine, and boy, have we all had a morning this morning already. So uh, let's get up in this gig. Please take a nice deep breath. <sighs> As we're going to start with the Caroline Mace archetype cards. Here we go. My collective pantheons. Ooh, tingle, tingle, tingle. My collective pantheons of angels, archangels, goddesses, gods, ascended masters, general assembly, and the higher selves of all involved, fifth dimension and above, eighth chakra and above. Please, what is the dominant eighth chakra archetype, right? What's going on in the eighth chakra for the Leo Collective? Sun, moon, rising, Venus sign, watching this video, receiving this uh, reading whenever they catch this, right? Whether it's their archetype, somebody else's. But when it's in the eighth chakra, uh, it kind of overlights everything. It affects everything else underneath it, right? So what is that dar dom dominant archetype that uh, they can be aware of, that they need to be aware of to alchemize it from shadow to light, led to 
into gold. That's a waning moon process. Uh, this full moon in Capricorn. Hello, flickery light to a new... Look, I got a strobe light. Mm, disco. This full moon in Capricorn waning to new in Cancer. Oh, a masculine family archetype, the fool. Now, this is not the idiot. This is like the holy fool. Uh, also connected to the clown and the comic archetype. Um, but I love the fool archetype. And it's different than the major arcana card, but only by a couple of hairs. Now, there's shadow and light. I use the language of alchemy. Lead and gold. Is that going to drive me nuts? Are you going to behave yourself? You're an LED. What are you doing? Nope. You just needed a little tightening. <laughs> Don't we all? <laughs> Pull it back. Uh, no surgery on this face, honey. Uh -uh. I don't like. I don't like needles, let alone scalpels. Uh, so, what is the three? Uh, atoms in, in lead that needs to be released, transformed, to turn it into gold. Uh, lead has three more atoms than gold on the periodic table, and I, I had that explained to me by an earth science teacher, so I'm going with what she said. The shadow attribute, using humor to wound rather than liberate denial of your emotional truth. Now, come on, that's a survival mechanism in a way, or right? a coping mechanism, uh, particularly when out in public. But this is like chronic, right? And particularly using humor to wound rather than liberate? Kind of raised that way. So as a Leo rising, I can, yeah, I can be able to see you next Tuesday when I'm a little possessed by the shadow. So, you know, if that's not you, <laughs> come on, Leo, <laughs> come on, fess up, we've been there. And no one's always in lead and always in gold, right? It's a spectrum, a percentage, right? Uh, so you're shooting for the light here, whether this is you dealing with somebody else, because even if you're dealing with somebody else with this archetype, you still get the benefit of the healing if you heal it. Uh, fearlessly revealing emotion. Uh, helping people laugh at absurdity and hypocrisy. Now, I'm just going to say, because they popped this into my head, and this card has not come up in a really long time, uh, uh, the, in, in the royal courts of, of long, long ago, the fool was the only one who could speak truth to the king without getting his head cut off, right? Because he made it funny. And this is alive and well, right? Like I said, it's also the comic, like Bill Maher. Right? Like, so many comics who go political, as well as even if they're just calling out the hypocrisy. Like, remember the early days of Roseanne? Right? You, I mean, you can see it all over the place once you click that archetype into place. And this is incredibly healing, but it is a masculine family archetype because it is about expression. It has nothing to do with biological gender. So, we're off to the races. That would be interesting to see if the Fool card also pops up, but let's keep going. Uh, that's our first healing system, Carolyn Mace archetype cards. Let's get our first oracle on the table, the angel. The healing with the angel's oracle. What angel that you could work with that is kind of involved, but you always need to call in angels, even if it's just, help, <laughs> that'll work, right? So please take a nice deep breath. As I call to uh, my angels of fire and the sign of Leo, the powers of the South, the Mikaelite, the legions of Archangel Michael, please one card in clarity for the Leo Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, I'm watching this video, receiving this reading. Archangel Michael's so hot. Oh, my God. He's like the sweet football player with the long hair that we all like. Uh, who is the perfect uh, legion of healing angels that the Leo Collective, uh, watching this video, receiving this reading, can call upon to help them with that alchemy? of the Fool archetype, even if it's not theirs, even if it's just a situation that they find themselves in, maybe a predicament rather than a problem. Predicaments have to be survived. <laughs> Problems have solutions. Predicaments, you just have to live through them. So uh, who is that healing angel they need to work with this full moon in Capricorn to new in Cancer? The healing angel of children. Now, I don't have kids. I have cats. And, you know, they're smarter than I am, so I'm so glad I don't have to send them to college, right? Uh, my three boys. If you follow me on Instagram or on Facebook, I'm always taking pictures of my three black cats because they're ridiculous, and I love them. And they're the sweetest things on planet Earth. Poor moi. So what would the healing angel of children be about? I'll bet you that if, you know, you don't have kids in your life like I don't, um, 
not my gig. Uh, I only, and I will actually only read people who are 18 years of older or of legal age, whatever that is, or it doesn't matter where they are. Um, because I'm for adults. I'm, I'm not an adult entertainer, but I, I, I'm only interested really in um, adult issues with people. But this then can very much have to do with your own inner child, your own innocence. Now, everybody has the inner child. Matt Kahn, we're going to hit his healing mantra deck in, in a couple, um, says just to talk to your heart chakra. Just to talk to your heart chakra, your emotional center, as the inner child will do. And you don't have to use overtly spiritual language. In fact, the inner child really doesn't like when we put it in the back seat because we're trying to be spiritual, when we're a spirit already, right? That child holds the keys to our success, our innocence, our creativity. So whatever healing needs to be done, even if this is dealing with literal children, because won't kids like fearlessly reveal emotions? And let's face it, Leo's, um, the carotid artery, if you look it up, Again, a science teacher told me this, a biology teacher told me this, looks like the sign of Leo. And I didn't really believe that. And then they showed it to me, you know, in a diagram, nothing literal in front of me. Thank you very much. I am a bit squeamish about that stuff. Um, so it is about being brave. And when children feel safe, they're up for everything. But if children don't feel safe, they're not up for anything, right? You could take them to wherever, the happiest place on earth, and they're still going to cower and hide. So look at the balance of courage to cowardice, right? Do you feel that? It is a spectrum. So, you know, denial of your emotional truth, that is cowardice because it's your emotional truth. Sure, it might change in a day or two. It might never change like the things written in your heart by the divine. Uh, but then to fearlessly reveal emotion that child's got to feel safe and loved. And what I say is, oh, sweetheart, it's okay. You get to feel whatever you want. I'm here. And nobody else needs to know about it and unless they need to know about it. All right? So you go ahead. And then the tears or the rage or whatever comes up. Inner child work is not new. Uh, I studied John Bradshaw's homecoming back in the, I think it was in the 80s, the early 90s. Jinkies, yeah. And uh, glad I did. Uh, of course, working with Matt Conn. If you have not watched his channel yet, Matt Connell for Love. He's a brilliant spiritual teacher. Uh, and he doesn't talk about the inner child all the time, but I learned a lot from him uh, and applied it. So I kind of have like inner child wisdom now, and that's why I look so young. That's really the secret to why I don't look my age. I got a happy, healthy inner child most of the time, right? And we get to see mom <laughs> every three months or so, and she made us, uh, us, like a <laughs> my child and I, uh, from scratch, Sicilian sesame cookies. I finished them off last night, so I'm a cookie guy. Yeah. So let's get some uh, tarot. We're going to do Daughters of the Moon tarot, because this is the eighth chakra, right? This is going to be heart, thir third eye crown. And after that, we'll use the mythic tarot to look at the root sac uh, sacrum solar plexus. So you can get the dynamics in, in this uh, deck. What's going on inside of you? Your heart, your emotional power, your throat, your willpower, what you will, what you won't, choices, spit, swallow, or chew, mental power, third eye, and your spiritual power. In the crown, please take a nice deep breath. <sighs> exhale. I was just waiting to exhale. Good movie. <sighs> oh, oh, there's the energy of uh, my goddesses of fire and the sign of Leo, please. Uh, one card in clarity. For the Leo Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs watching this video, receiving this reading, what do they need to be aware of inside of themselves, particularly because we're looking at emotional stuff here, right? Fearlessly revealing emotions, helping people laugh at absurdity and hypocrisy. So, you know, this is heart chakra oriented, so this one's probably going to be key, please. Uh, what do you got for the Leo Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign to help them with all of this? This full moon in Capricorn, waning to new in Cancer. Okay, it's a major arcana card, but I thought if it was the strength card, the Leo card, or the fool, that would make sense. You got the Wheel of Fortune. Things are turning inside of you. Things are changing, right? And things are written. 
you know, I've been experiencing uh, the divine plan through the lens of quantum physics that every op and, and as some of you know this, but I mean, I would really seriously check out the movie What the Bleep Do We Know? God, it came out in I think the early 2000s. Marley Matlin's in it. She's a genius in it. Really, really good, like, documentary. Um, but dramatized. And you really get to see there, because they do it with all these different cool computer graphics, that any decision or choice you make, third chakra, uh, uh, if you turn left, another version of you turns right. So you can't screw up the divine plan, right? So that's what I'm seeing here with the life weaver, the spider woman. Not to be confused with the Marvel uh, hero. Although, why not? Um, Jessica, I think her name was. Uh, you know, the spinning wheel, right? That wheel with 12 spokes, the 12 signs, uh, the 12 months of the year. That there's something moving forward within you, but it is written into the script, your, the life plan of uh, your journey this time around. And I hear the landscapers. Yeah, it's, it's Thursday. They usually, they've been changing up the day, though timing, right? And that is this. This I, I can feel the energy on this. This feels good. This feels like, yeah, you know what? I've grown. I've faced my fate. I've alchemized it into destiny. There's a difference between fate and destiny. That's alchemy. Lead is uh, fate. Destiny is gold if you do the alchemy, if you take the hero's journey. So there's something here written into your heart. I'm just going to go with that. Of course, it's heart, throat, third eye, crown dynamic. That what you are feeling and experiencing is written in, just like... Um, you know, an actor goes to the director and says, what's my motivation? Well, the divine is the motivation here, and absolutely, this is any time I see the Wheel of Fortune, and particularly uh, this version, if you look into who Spider-Woman is, how this world was created, is that the Anasazi myth? I don't know. They all blend together at this point in my life. Uh, but it, it is the fabric of the universe, the divine plan, the quantum all of it. Every timeline, every lifetime, right? Not just this planet either. So, <coughs> I did have a little extra half and half in my milk, so I'm not going to take that as an intuitive sign, that cough. Uh, so, let's see what's going on on the outside. A lower three chakras, external dynamic, yang dynamic, if the heart thir third eye crown is yin. Uh, the masculine energy side of this, either you, from the outside, looking in at yourself, or you looking outside of yourself through your own eyes it's an aspect of the physical breathe mm -hmm. yeah now this took a serious turn okay i feel that uh please my gods of fire and the sign of leo aries and apollo please one card in clarity for our beloved Leo Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs, watching this video, receiving this reading, alchemizing the Fool archetype, working with the healing angel of children, with this Spider Woman turn of the wheel going inside of them, something that can, well, uh, be delayed, but probably not prevented. And it feels good anyway, but what is this going on on the outside, please, for them? Them from the outside looking in, or otherwise, this full moon in Capricorn, waning to new in Cancer. The devil knew it, felt it, constraint. Now, people could say this is addiction and toxicity, and that's all true. Um, but, you know, going back here, right? Using humor to wound rather than liberate denial of your emotional truth. So if this really is someone you are dealing with or a situation, it's one where you're feeling trapped. Now, you've got two major arcana cards one for your inner, the Wheel of Fortune, and one for the outer. This is telling me really clearly your authenticity is needed. Your emotional authenticity is needed. But that doesn't mean you need to blow somebody's head off, right? That you can work with that inner child who, you know, remembers everything. The, the, the inner child remembers every slight, every insult, every abandonment, every abuse, every codependent aspect, every loss. Just feels it, holds it in our emotions. And the thing is, is, if we don't clear that stuff, it has nowhere else to go but into our cell tissue and into the collective of humanity, which drives us empaths and nuts because we're clearing other people's energy, right? So, you know, what is the fear? What's more important? Your authenticity as the Leo that you shine 
we really, I mean, I'm Leo Rising, but you know, there really is something about the heart here. Uh, the courage, right? The French word for the heart is cur. It's where we get the word cur, uh, courage from. Not just to follow the heart, but to fearlessly reveal. And I have a feeling these chains would break. Now, this is a waning moon read, so this is very apt uh, for this energy that's hit the table, obviously, but it doesn't need to be done all at once. Capricorn, uh, 10th house, the full moon, is about highest potential. So if you can do this alchemy a little bit every day, it's like you can't purify your inner child wounds in a weekend, nor in a two-week period. Because remember, if you are an empath, a divine feminine, first wave ascension, whatever you want to call it, you're purifying that for everyone on planet Earth. So the healthier and the better relationship that you have the less these chains will bind. And as we see so often in uh, the tarot card of the devil, not in every artistic interpretation, I should say variation, but certainly starting with Pamela Coleman Smith in uh, the Rider Waite deck, those chains are loose around their neck. They could just whoop, slip them off. And I feel like the liberation that you've been seeking is within you, but you got to liberate that child first. Give it that safe space to cry, to scream, to rail, but not to send the text, right? Until it's time, until it's like, you yeah, know, this needs to be said now, this needs to be revealed. Um, because when you say to that child, I don't care what anybody else thinks, I love you. I don't care what anybody else says or does, I love you, I've got you. Then you become the parent to your own inner child, and that child then feels safe to be authentic. And you can bitch and moan as much as you want about like corruption in politics and in business and shadow this and that. Well, this is our part of it to do this. I'm down. I'm down for it. We got uh, one healing system on the table. We've got one oracle, two tarot. Let's do our second healing system, the aforementioned healing mantra deck by Matt Kahn. Incredibly helpful for me, for my clients, I actually do these mantras. Uh, what I do once I've done all the readings is I write, write all these down, is I take the mantras, four of them, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs. I literally have different uh, placements for each, different, uh, yeah, different signs. And I put them together in a paragraph. And do I say them a hundred times a day? No. But I keep them in the corner of my eye, sort of like the MTV logo, because <laughs> I'm Generation X. Breathe. Hmm. <laughs> Do you hear that too? <laughs> My ascended masters, thanks for keeping it light. Uh, one card in clarity, the perfect healing mantra for the Leo Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, the signs watching this video, receiving this reading. What do they need, right? Just the thing to carry them through this, to give them a little uh, leverage, something that they can practice and play with to heal uh, and alchemize this fool archetype with the healing angel of children, wheel of fortune, spider woman, life weaver on the inner, the devil, right? That, that fear, those chains of pain that bind us in some way, shape or form. What do you got for us all, the Leo collective to help us heal this full moon in Capricorn waxing to new and cancer. This card keeps coming up. This is the third time inviting ecstasy. So into it. I know Cancer got it. Who else got it? Who else got it? Who else got it? Oh, uh, uh, Aries and Cancer got it. Now we add Leo to the ecstatic list. I love this one. Don't even need to read what's on the card. I am worthy of all the pleasure my heart desires. I have a grapevine growing outside that I bless that. I say the mantra, I fill it up, and I... Um, I'm sort of an earthbender, I guess you could say, and a waterbender, just sending that right into it. I am worthy of all the pleasure my heart desires. Now, of course, if the kid is wounded, it's going to say, give me all the candy I want or I'll burn the house down. That's not what we're talking about. And that's why I will read you from the bookiness of the book, the bookie books. Yeah, yeah, I... I, I um, <laughs> British men have had way too much of an influence on me <laughs> inviting ecstasy. I am worthy of all the pleasure my heart, get what we're saying here, my heart desires. 
When ecstasy is invited, you feel aligned and ready to receive all the miraculous and joyful gifts of experience the universe is ready to provide you. Okay, let's take a pin in that. In other words, there are all these experiences queued up for us, like a video game, right? You beat the boss, you, you level up. But if, you know, you go on little side quests or whatever, you know, it, it's still waiting for you. But we have to get to a certain place before we are ready for that. So to invite ecstasy, and ecstasy is incredibly high vibration. My, my um, natal patron is the god Dionysus. Now people think of him as the god of theater and the god of wine, but really in his highest ascended state, he's the god of ecstasy that has nothing to do with physical form at all, right? The ecstasy of union tantric and or otherwise. So, ecstasy acts as a cosmic green light that grants your, what? Destiny, your density, uh, uh, your destiny permission to enter, right? So when you start inviting in ecstasy, it's like this green light that says, okay, I'm fully charged. Let's do this, right? Uh, in many instances, pain can be healed and released once a healthy relationship with pleasure is established. Now, this is what they're giving me. If you are in a codependent relationship with someone, and I don't care if it's lover, friend, boss, family, whatever, codependence is a killer. It's a killer of dreams. It's a killer of relationships. It's a killer of trust. And it's certainly compromising your integrity. Well, the great thing about being knowing over time, right? This is a mantra that you're going to work over a period of time. It fills, it, you realize I am not dependent upon anybody to feel good. I can feel good by closing my eyes, taking a few deep breaths and inviting in ecstasy. But that doesn't mean some excavation isn't necessary. And I feel like that's what that uh, inner child thing is. And certainly that's going to snap some chains that bind you. Last little bit here. This mantra is ideal for increasing self-worth and what child doesn't need to know their worth, elevating levels of excitement, <laughs> and allowing bigger dreams. Your child has big dreams, but because of unprocessed pain and maybe not such a healthy relationship with pleasure, is afraid to trust. Right? Once bitten, twice shy. I'm through with love. I'll never fall again. You know, but maybe it's not that romantic thing. I'm not really getting this as a soul contract necessarily, but we're going to ask the, uh, we're going to keep that in mind because what deck is next? As I like to call it, the party turnter, the Tina turnter, the whispers of love oracle, voices of the higher self. Let's see. Breathe. such a different vibe. It's like shooting up into the satellites. The higher selves of all involved, fifth dimension and above, eighth chakra and above. Please, one card in clarity for the Leo Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs, watching this video, receiving this uh, reading. What is the piece of information, inspiration, or insight they most need to help them alchemize this full archetype working with the healing angel? of angels uh, of children with their destiny card, right? Uh, the wheel of fortune on the inner and the devil on the outer while they invite ecstasy, really getting that we are all worthy of all the pleasure our heart desires, but that's an inside job. Nothing on the outside is gonna give you that particular flavor. So please, what is your guidance for the Leos this full moon in Capricorn to new in Cancer? New love. New love. Embrace this new opportunity of love that is here. This may pertain to work opportunities or spiritual growth. In other words, they're not just talking about unlover. Maybe you take what resonates, right? But if that child does not feel safe, I can tell you, wow, you really want me to say this? All right. I have totally chosen other men. I'm gay, if you didn't know. Check your gaydar, the batteries are dead. Uh, uh, I've totally chosen toxic men over the safety of my inner child because I was seeking what I could have already found within myself. And that's why my standards now are incredibly high in all areas, business as well as pleasure. Um, but this is a new love I feel like that you're invoking into yourself because 
that's that courage. It takes great courage to love in this world, particularly after this past year or so, or longer, right? So this may absolutely be about work opportunities, but I think spiritual growth, since we're looking at the child here, not the child archetype, but definitely a healing of that child in some way, shape, or form, even if it's an external one, right? Then really deal with your own. Holographically, that's really how we help people heal, is by healing ourselves. So, um, let's see. Let's see. Let's get this last card down here. And as I said, this is uh, the Blessed Bee. I'm calling it an oracle, even though mystical cards, Celtic blessing cards of to enrich and empower. I love them. There's not a lot written on the cards. The art is gorgeous. So this will be the, another bookie book. Please take a nice deep breath. And I call upon my gods and goddesses of all pantheons. Please, one card in clarity. What is the blessing you would impart? <coughs> <coughs> Yeah, that's definitely coffee. Um, what blessing would you have us cough up for ourselves? Uh, this, uh, for the Leo Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs, watching this video, receiving this reading, uh, doing the alchemy of the fool from using humor to wound rather than liberate and denial of our emotional truth into the light of fearlessly revealing emotions and helping people laugh at absurdity and hypocrisy, working with the healing angel of children, uh, Wheel of Fortune on the inner, Devil on the outer, inviting ecstasy because we are all worthy of all the pleasure our heart desires because there is this new love, probably one that we experience through spiritual growth, but once that's done, fearlessly revealing love in a time where this planet definitely is in need of that. So what is the blessing you have for the Leos, please? This full moon in Capricorn waning to new in Cancer. Wow. 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 Now, don't take this too literally, but card number 12, a blessing for a mother. Come on. You know, inner child work, I believe, was originally called reparenting, and you'll still come across that. Oh, and there are probably 10 billion videos on YouTube on inner child work. So, you know, buyer beware. It's free. Because, um, uh, you know, there's the spiritual part of it. Oh, stick a chakra. Stick a crystal on your chakra. Heal it forever. Doesn't work that way. Uh, but then there is also the psychological. You can certainly find counselors and therapists who specialize in this kind of stuff, as well as rebirthing, which is a, ho a holotropic, holographic, whatever, breath technique, uh, Leonard Orr, Sandra Ray, they're on YouTube if you want to go back to where I learned uh, rebirthing from. So let me read you this, uh, a blessing for a mother, and that's why I don't take it too literal of like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm a dude. It's not about that. Oh, opened right to it. And where is the magnifying glass? Excuse me for a moment, because I love Blue Angel Publishing, but they're italics. Is there such a thing as microscopic italic? If so... They've got it. Card number 12. A blessing for a mother. So it gives you a description and then it gives you the blessing. So let me read all of this. This is all... Yeah, it's just two pages. Please take a nice deep breath and breathe in this blessing. <sighs> Give me the words. Speak them through me. Card number 12. A blessing for a mother. A blessing for a mother so that she knows and deeply understands the sacred and challenging path she walks and appreciates that the state and the rights of motherhood evolve just as her child will grow and change into their own true self. Now, before I go further, Matt Kahn says that the inner child holds the keys to our success, the pin codes to our success, but is also the seeds of the higher self in physical form, the eternal, right? So that true self thing. Um, to birth the child within, there we go, birth the child into the world through the cauldron of the womb and feed the babe at the breast and yet need to learn how to let go. 
Right. It's all of that. It, and to let go, to let go, not just of the child as it grows, but certainly to let go of those wounds that were absolutely written, scripted into your life so that you could heal them now. So we are probably looking at childhood wounds here. Uh, that, the, that the test and quest of motherhood and you, right? Oh, that is the test and the quest of motherhood. And you are its initiate. For within motherhood are great paradoxes and contradictions. To be a mother is to be at once yourself and another. To be a mother is a yearning for the well-being of another, dearest in all the world, yet imperfect and growing, and wild and unknowable. How is it that a mother can carry the yearning, the care, the delight, the love, the intimacy, and the purity of motherhood? The sheer hard work of it, the feeding and the cleaning of the young, and within all this is the desire to give birth again to the self who you are becoming through this great initiation. In other words, by doing, and, and again, this is if you have literal children, you kind of know this. This is a little bit more clarity and a blessing. We'll get to the blessing part. But this is really the blessing of you allowing your authentic, playful, emotionally vulnerable, fearless inner self to express itself. To be a mother is to be deeply your own true self and yet selfless. To love another deeply and open up yet another room and another and another within your heart. To be a mother is to see the world's children and babies as your own. It is to be primal, prehistoric, and ageless. Beyond dogma and preaching, you are the creator of all, and once you were worshipped, and she still is in this house, the mother of all. Before there was the Tao, there was her. Here's the blessing. Breathe. May you be blessed with your children's well-being. May motherhood ignite in you the flame of healing for any wounds from your own childhood. May the earth mother you and bless you as you walk through the challenges of the way of the mother. May your arms be strong, but not so tight as to not know when to soften and release the tender ones from that fierce protection. May your womb quicken with healthy babies, and may their delivery into the world be as deep and uh, deep and initiatory as the stepping between the worlds was always meant to be. May you know your value lies beyond that which the sorry, what was that? May you know your value lies beyond that of your fruitfulness and is within the characters you've helped shape and the lessons you've taught. Forgive yourself for your imperfections, for mothering is a sacred task that we are all untaught at. We must find our way through, feel, sheer instinct, and that mother's love that all desire. And when it comes to the time when you will no longer bear the young, May the young come to you and recognize all that you have done, and in the warmth of their affection and gratitude, may you grow old with joy as your companion. Blessed be. Yeah, I mean, you don't have to be a literal mother for this. I have the mother archetype in my archetypal chart for sure. People reject their mother issues onto me all the time. I'm like, whatevs. I'm over it, but I am a divine feminine, so whatever. Uh, my divine masculine ain't on point. It's getting there. I'm honing him as we go. Uh, but isn't that all about, right, feeling safe within your own heart? Because I've dated a lot of villains. Like, in my family, we all have family issues, right? But, like, I've played out a lot of my stuff in romantic relationships, right? So to choose the safety of your own child, not out of fear, but out of love, say, no, something feels off here. Let's back off. Let's just watch, honey. No, no, no. You come first. I love you. Because you're realizing that you're talking to your source, right? And, of course, there's labor. And, of course, there's a, there's a, a lot of 
Uh, a lot of trials and tribulations. Though I have no raised, I have not raised literal children in this world. I have raised Drawing the Circle production since 1998. 23. I have a 23 year old, right? And it's an everyday thing. Even when it's a day off, it's not really a day off, right? And as well as doing that inner child work, this is really lovely. Let me put it all together for you. <sighs> cool read. Please, they're perfect for a waning moon too. And it ends in Cancer, the sign of the mother, right? The mother of the Zodiac. Got it. Please take a nice deep breath. Right? So then it's going to be that, that first part of the waxing moon will be Leo. My beloved pantheons of the divine, please may the Leo collective sun, moon, rising, Venus signs watching this video, receiving this reading, be blessed with all that they need. This full moon in Cancer waning. Uh, sorry, full moon in Capricorn, the Capricorn card waiting to new in Cancer, that they may deal with the restraints, with the toxicity, with the chains that bind, the chains of smoke, the chains of illusion, to break chains of illusion and set all things to right, to reveal what has been hidden and bring their love to light as they invite ecstasy. Really uh, getting that they are worthy of all the pleasure their heart desires because it's time because this is just written into the script of their life that they're going through this right now that they haven't done anything wrong but just like in a pregnancy there is a time uh, for the 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 child within literal or uh, uh, psychological, spiritual, to go through its stages of development until it is born and then takes off on its own so that they can really free themselves by doing the alchemy uh, to fearlessly reveal emotions and helping people laugh at absurdity and hypocrisy with the blessings of the mother upon them as we speak because this new love is pr most likely the love that they will feel of the mother within them as they mother that child with the healing angel of children that as one inner child heals holographically all inner children heal so that together we do heal we do grow we do uncover our obscured innocence that has always been there waiting for our embrace and that we may love like never before as the leos that we are purring and then roaring as needed for our well-being and for the well-being of all so would be and so it is it was really good i mean look Look, we got children, right? Right? You got you got the mother here, you got inviting ecstasy. It's really puzzle pieces together. So did you like it? Well then like it. It helps other people find it. Do you want more and you're not a subscriber? Go ahead, subscribe if you like. Comment if you will. Is this literal children for you or is this your inner child or is it both, right? Sometimes it's not an either or, it's a both and. And by all means, you want to book me for a reading, Facebook, Instagram, uh, uh, what's the other one? Twitter. DM me. Slide into my DMs. We'll work something out. I'm doing Zoom readings where you can record it or I can record it and send you the link. Uh, or we can do a Facebook video call. I'm not quite. I just got the shot in the arm, so I'm not quite ready to do face-to-face -face just yet. Really enjoying being in my home and working from my home Virgo that I am, obviously. My Leo rising gets up to bat every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So thank you so, uh, so much for watching. Wishing you all the very best and the very blessed of this full to new, which is going to be very challenging. I get the feeling for everyone, but now you got some codes and some keys and some, you know, some tips along the way. Cool, cool. Thank you so much for watching. My loves. Hail. Farewell. Blessed, blessed be.